Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5, in module 3, we are working on lesson number 5. And tonight we are subtracting fractions with unlike units using the, using the strategy of creating equivalent fractions. So today is very much like what we've done in the last couple of days. The only difference is that the operation. Uh, in the past we've been using addition and today we'll be doing subtraction. And really, this is basically the same process. There's only one tiny wrinkle in the way we actually organize our, our models, uh, but the math is very, very similar. Let's take a look at a couple problems from tonight's homework. Problem number two asks the following. Find the difference. Use a rectangular fraction model to find common denominators. Simplify your answer, if possible. Let's take a look at what we've got here for B. Uh, in problem B, we have 2 thirds minus 1 half. So I'm going to go ahead and do our rectangular model for, let's see, two-thirds. So I'm going to partition vertically into thirds, and let's see, I need to shade, let's see, two-thirds, so I'm going to shade two of my three sections. And over here on the right, I'm going to do another rectangular model. This time I'm going to divide horizontally, and I need to represent one-half. That's the easiest of these, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Excellent. And now we remember the steps from Lessons 3 and Lessons 4, and even as far back as Lesson 2, we just need to repartition each of these diagrams um, so that they're the same. So let's see, on this diagram, we partition vertically into thirds, so we need to partition it horizontally into halves, just like we had done here. So I'm going to do that. Awesome. And on this one, we've already partitioned horizontally into halves, so I need to partition vertically into thirds. So I'm going to do that. One, two. Awesome. And now I'm going to go ahead and count up my parts. Let's see, my new diagrams are in six, it looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it looks like we have four of them here, so that's four sixths. And we are subtracting, let's see, one, two, three sixths here. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is a really easy math problem that we can just do. Four sixths minus three sixths is one sixth. But if you want to do them in a slightly different way, um, or that uh, a way that we've tracked in the book, we can also cross out, uh, we can, since we're doing subtraction, we started with 4 sixths, and we can basically cross out 3 sixths, and that will show us visually that there's only 1 sixth remaining. And I have no problem with doing that, it just seems like once I've gotten to this point, I'm okay with go ahead and going ahead and just doing that as mental math rather than following through uh, on our model. But I will leave that up to you and your teacher about how you guys want to handle that. But in any case, we've gotten to a common unit, sixths. Now we can do our subtraction, and we'll end up with 1 6. And remember, the problem at the beginning was, and a common misconception here, is that we would just subtract across. Oh, 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 2 is 1, there we go, 1, 1, right? But we can't do that because we don't have the same units. These are thirds, and these are halves, and we can't subtract those. Any more that we can subtract oranges from apples, or subtract bicycles from cars, or subtract children from parents, we have to have the same unit. And we don't have the same unit here. Once we have the same unit, sixths, we have no trouble. Let's take at one more problem from tonight's homework. Directions are the same, and we have a new problem. Two-thirds minus two-fifths. So let's go ahead and do our rectangular models. We're going to do our first fraction, which is two-thirds, because we need to get this into the same unit. Two-thirds, we're going to divide it vertically into thirds, and we're going to shade in two of our three-thirds. And then we're going to do another model over here. And we are going to divide this one into fifths horizontally, so one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to again shade in two. You can see how sloppy my models are. Now we're going to do the same thing we've done in the past, which is we're going to partition each, um, each of these diagrams the exact same way. So this one has gone vertically into thirds, but now we need to go horizontally into fifths. So one, two, three, four, five. And this one has gone horizontally into fifths, so we need to go vertically into thirds. One, two. So now what kind of units do we have? Well, let's see. What fractions do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We're working in fifteenths. You know, we can count those up or we could skip count. This is 5, 10, 15. Either way, we're going to come up with 15. And let's see, how many of those are shaded? Well, let's see. This looks like 5, 10 are shaded over here. And we're going to subtract these, let's see, that's three, six, six of them over here. And I can, again, I can do this math. Let's see, 10 minus six is four fifteenths. We're all working in the same unit now, fifteenths minus fifteenths, so we can do the subtraction. And again, if we wanted to cross out six of these fifteenths, we could do that as well. Let's do that. We'll end up with the same result, which is that there are one, two, three, four shaded 
fifteenths that remain uncrossed out. Four fifteenths, we've got our answer, and that doesn't look like it's simplifiable into any uh, larger unit. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I hope this wasn't too difficult for you, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.